Now, I'm going to be mainly showing you Topaz Studio 2, the quad tone filter and the dual tone filter, but I'm going to briefly touch upon uh, Photoshop's uh, color lookup tables, and we're also going to briefly go into Luminar 4 lookup tables. I just want to show you different approaches of color grading, but we're going to mainly settle on uh, a deep, deeper dive into uh, Topaz Studio 2, the quad tone filter and the dual tone filter. So without any further ado, let's get color grading. Now, there are many different ways of color grading your images. We're looking at Topaz Studio 2 today, but I wanted to show you a couple of other options here. For instance, if you're in Photoshop and you come down to the adjustment layers, you can find the uh, color lookup table. And this is a good way of color grading your images. It gives you some different choices here. Uh, just come up here to see where it says load 3D lookup table. There's a drop down menu here. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, I'd like to be able to hover over these and see what they look like. But what I have to do is click on one at a time like crisp warm you can see oh that looks really nice and beautiful and then you could try and sample out different ones like here's one called film stock and you can just come down through and try these different ones here which is nice and um, let's go ahead and delete this layer but that's one way that you could color grade another way that you could do it I'm going to duplicate this background layer and go up to filter and launch luminar 4 and inside of Luminar 4, we have the color lookup tables as well. Now, I, I like those lookup tables because uh, with these particular lookup tables, you can hover over uh, the different lookups. See where it says choose let right here, click on this, and then you can just hover over these and you can see what they're going to do to your image as you hover over them, which is, which is a really nice way to go, right? So you can hover over these. And if you get one that you like, like this one right here, color punch hot, then I could come here and I can increase the amount of that, like so. I can increase its contrast or decrease its contrast, get it, getting it to look just the way I like it, maybe increase the, the uh, saturation or whatever. We can use layer masks and things like that. And if we like it, we can just click Apply. And we've uh, added that lookup table to it, and we've color graded our image, which is, which is really cool. And I think it gives our images that cinematic look. And I'm all about like creating with my images, giving them that little extra something special. So we've come from this image, and we've went to here. So, so that's Luminar. Now let me go ahead and duplicate the background layer. And I'm just going to drag it to the top of this layer stack here. Now I'm going to take this into uh, Topaz Studio too. I went ahead and named the uh, copy of the background layer here to uh, Topaz Studio 2. And the one under it that we sent just a minute ago into uh, Luminar 4 and added the uh, lookup table. I called it Luminar 4, just so we won't be confused. And now I'm just going to come up to Filter and we'll go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. There's a whole bunch of different filters you can use for color grading, but two of my favorites, which is what I'm going to show you today, would be found under Add Filter in the Creative section. Now, the first one I want to show you, and it's the easiest to use, would be the Dual Tone Filter, and then the second one would be the Quad Tone Filter. So basically, it gives you two more tones that you can work with. But let's look at the uh, Dual Tone Filter first. So let's click on that. And you'll notice here we have Highlight Color and Shadow Color. So we can basically tint our highlights and tint our uh, shadows separately. And it's a very simple filter to use, and you can also use it with blend modes, which is very powerful. But let me show you straightforward how to use it. Uh, just start to pull the highlight slider up, and then watch this area here. You'll see another slider magically appear. See the highlights uh, hue slider appear? So I can pull this up to the right. Now, the more you pull it, the more that color is going to be induced into your image here, okay? And you'll notice it's defaulted on this color right here, which is uh, the slider is at 0.15, and it's more of a yellow type color. And so we're adding a yellow tint to our highlights. You see that? And we're color grading our image by doing that. So let's pull this up some, but now we can drag this hue slider. Watch, we can drag it into the red tones and see how we're color grading. And we can move it into the green tones. And, you know, you can just drag across here. And that's how I really like to do it, is just drag through the different hues and see what kind of a look I want. I'm looking for, like, more of a cinematic look to an image. You know, it depend, depends what kind of a look you want. Uh, let's see what happens if I... Let's try this. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta-type tones to the highlights. Now, that's too strong, I think, so I'm going to pull it back. I just want to induce a little bit of that magenta into the image. 
Okay, and now we can play with the shadows. So let's take our shadow slider and start to pull it up. And you notice it defaults at 0.65, which is more of a blue tone. So it's going to put a blue tone into our shadows, which it, that looks really pretty, right? You know, it looks really nice. But the thing I like about the uh, dual tone and the quad tone is it lets you pick the colors that you want. Okay, so for a real fast color grade, the uh, dual tone is beautiful. So and let's find a color we want now i do like the blue in the shadows let's see what happens if you know we could add green hues to the shadows we could take warmer hues into the shadows maybe some redder redder tones into the shadows and i do kind of like that maybe a little more to the orange side of things now i can take the shadow slider and i can drag it more to the right okay now that's too much i think but maybe right around there and I always like to left click on my canvas just to see it. there's the before and the after and if I felt I went too strong I can take the overall opacity and just start to ease it back and just induce a little bit of that tone in there see that here's the before and here's the after before and after and I might say you know what I want a little bit more here's the before and after so that looks cool the other thing you can do though is let me take this opacity and take it the whole way back up is you can balance uh, the highlight and the color shadows between each other in other words I can favor more of the highlight uh, colors by moving this to the right or I can favor more of the shadow colors by moving this to the left on the balance you see that but right in the center is going to be equal amounts of both but after you've adjusted them you know you can move this one way or the other and stop at the point where you think yeah, that looks good. So I want I want to see more of those warmer shadows than those uh, redder tones or the magenta tones in the highlights. Or I might want to see more of that magenta tone in the highlight in the image. So depending on what you want, but you have this, you know, you have this adjustment that you could work with in the balance, which is very powerful. The dual tone is very effective in just the normal blend mode, but you can play with the other blend modes, and I highly recommend that you do play. Because playing around is where the happy accidents appear and sometimes it'll take you in the right directions. So play around with blend modes. Now some of my favorite blend modes are like the multiply blend mode. Now right there it's a little bit on the dark side. So if I wanted to use that I would uh, select multiply and then I would just pull back on my opacity somewhat. You know, something like that. Now, here's the before and here's the after. So, pretty cool. So, you get these different looks. And I'm looking for that more cinematic look. And that, that would that would apply here. So, now let's go back to uh, the blend modes here. And another one would be like screen blend mode. See, that looks really cool. And then you have overlay, which is going to give you a little more contrast. There's overlay. And here's soft light. Two very good blend modes. Now I have my opacity pulled back, so but I do like the soft light a lot. So let's just pull that up a little bit, the opacity. So somewhere right around in there. So here's the before and here's the after. So pretty cool, right? And then you can come and play around and move your sliders around and get it looking just the way, just the way you like it. But here's the before and here's the after. But the color grading adds a beautiful effect. Now let's go ahead and shut off this uh, dual tone layer. And now let me show you the uh, quad tones so you can see the difference. So let's come up here to add filter. And now let's go to the quad tone filter right here. And now let's play with it. Now you'll notice the quad tone filter has blacks, shadows, highlights, and whites. So now we have a little bit more options that we can work with. So let's start playing with this. And this is going to work a little different. You're not going to have two sliders. You'll see how it works here. The first thing you need to do is take the strength slider and start to move it to the right. And you'll see your image change. Okay, and I'll take it the whole way to the right so you can see. There's the colors right there from the blacks, shadows, highlights and white's tone mapped onto your image right there you can see it right there those colors have taken over complete control that's not really the way i like to use it although sometimes for artistic effects i may use it this way but normally what i'll do is i'll take my strength and just let my original colors be tinted with these black shadows highlights and whites and maybe somewhere let's start i like to start out around 50 and work from there so if i left click my canvas here's my before and here's my after so here's my before and here's the after so you can see i've color graded my image right there now that's the default settings now we're, we're going to start to play with these different tones here let's start off with the black tones now just come over to the black swatch right here this drop down menu give it a click and when you do you're going to get a color wheel that pops up now i'm on a mac machine windows may look a little different you're going to get a color wheel and a luminance slider range here now this is important 
The left side of the uh, luminance slider here is going to be highlights and lighter tones to your whitest whites on the very left here, and to your blackest blacks, the whole way over to the right over here. In the center would be your mid-tones. Now you'll notice we're working with black, so this is where the slider is sitting right here. Now sometimes uh, you may not see the effect take place on your image because you might have to move the slider a little more to the left. It, it really depends. So. Right now we're working with black tones and see on the color wheel this little target right here. We can start to move this around. Now watch, watch darker areas like around his shoes here or the really dark shadows inside his coat. I'm going to start to move this into the greens and see if you can see a change. Can you see a change? It's very slight, but watch when I take the, uh, the luminance range slider and move it a little bit more to the left. You can see those areas. See them starting to really show up in here around his shoes and that like in those areas so if you're not seeing an effect you can move this to the left a little bit okay so somewhere right around in there but i don't think i want to add green to my shadows it defaults in these bluer tones right here which is pretty cool but what i might do is go a little bit more into the um purple range of things here now this target here if it's moving around the edge of the color wheel you have maximum saturation or you can move it into the center with no saturation whatsoever right in the center, okay? So depending where you slide it here, see how the saturation increases here? Look on, this sli on the slider here for the luminance here. So that's the actual color right there. But we're looking at this color right in this area right in here in the shadow. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give it some, some saturation right around there. So that is the blacks. Now you don't have, you could click okay if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just leave this color wheel open. If you don't click okay, the color wheel stays open. If you click okay, it shuts on you. So let's go to shadows now and click this and watch the color will change for the shadows. It, it'll it go to this bluish color here. So let me click it. See, there's that blue color right there. And you notice this is where it sits on the color range or the luminance range right here. Now we can change that color. Now I would recommend that we use this purple color in the black area. So let's stick with that theme. Let's go more into that purple color here. And, and can you see it changing? Like look in the shadow areas in here. So now I'm working with the shadows. Okay. Now if it's too strong, you can, again, you can pull it up towards the center and that'll take a little bit of that strength out. But let's leave it right about there for now. And you can always left click on your canvas and see the before and after. So that's looking pretty cool. Now let's work with our highlights. So let's click the highlight drop down menu here. And now you can see the highlights are sitting right around here. But nobody says you can't move this, okay? So we're in the highlights right now. And what happens if we take our highlights really to the red side of things? Now watch up in this area in the sky up in these trees up in here so you can really see it. Or I can go into the green tone, see that. Whatever color that you like in there. So we might want to go more orange. Give it that warmer feel. Somewhere right around in there. And watch, I can take this luminous slider and slide it. And affect any of those colors that I want. So play with all the sliders. It's important. And I'm thinking maybe right around in there. And I have maximum saturation on that. Which I do like that. Now here's the before and here's the after. So I got the purplish tints on the shadow areas. I got warmer tints on the highlights. And now let's go for the very whites. And watch this luminance range slider. It should move more to the left here when I click here. See it move over? And I'm still in those warm tones. Now it wouldn't make sense, I don't think, to move it into green tones, right? Although for artistic reasons, you might say it looks good. Or I might move it into, let me grab this. And move it into pinker tones, which doesn't make much sense, right? But I'm going to stick with the warmer colors in here. See, somewhere right around in there. Now, here's my before and here's my after. So I'm liking that. This looking really good. So it takes a little more work with the quad uh, tone, but, you know, versus the uh, dual tone. But you get a lot more control here. So here's the before and here's the after. Now, if it's too strong, just take the strength and move it to the left. And we can just subtly tint those colors, maybe right around there. Here's a before and here's the after. Before, hold that for a few seconds. I'm just left-clicking and holding down on my mouse, and here's the after. So I like that. I might just give it a little bit more right around there, before and after. Now, just like the dual tone, we have the um, blend mode. So let's play with our blend modes. Again, let's look at multiply. There's multiply. And there's screen. 
And don't be afraid to go through all the different ones here. Now, I think like screen looks really over overdone here. So let me click on screen. But don't forget, I can take take the opacity, pull the opacity the whole way off and just sli slightly build it up. OK, so you can do that. So let me go up about to 65 here and let's play around some more. Let's go to overlay. There's overlay. Overlay is going to add a little bit more contrast and soft light. Here's soft light. I do like soft light a lot for color grading. But try all the different blend modes. Play. You're never going to know until you, until you experiment. But let's take opacity the whole way up and it would look like this. But then we can just start to slowly peel it back. You know, maybe, maybe right around there. But blend modes are really great when you're doing color grading. There's my before and there's my after. So the before and there's the after. I think it looks really nice before and after. And then you can always take your strength. If you feel you're not getting enough color showing through, just take your strength slider and start to move it to the right. See, and those colors will start to show through more. So a lot of times when I'm using blend modes, a lot of times you can take that strength and take it the whole way over. But if you're in the normal, and that looks good. So here's the before and there's the after. I like it. It looks really nice. But if you're in the normal blend mode, it's going to look like this. You're going to see all those colors, right? And you're not going to like it. So in the normal blend mode, you definitely have to pull the strength slider back. You know, to somewhere, you know, probably a good rule of thumb is 50, hovering around 50 to 60 or less, just to give your image that extra tint. But play around and have fun. But that is uh, color grading in uh, Topaz Studio 2 using um, the quad tone filter and the dual tone filter. If you'll recall, I started out in Photoshop and brought this into Topaz Studio 2. But if you started out in Topaz Studio 2, all you have to do to save this, if you're happy with everything, is come up the file and click Save Project As. Now, if you started out in Photoshop, you can just come here and click Accept. And by the way, you can also, if you start out in Photoshop, come up here to File and Save Project As and save it as a Project 2 if you want to. And then after that, you can come and uh, just click uh, accept and they'll send you back into Photoshop. And by the way, I ended up liking this in the soft light blend mode with the strength up full. Here's my before and here's my after. So I'm just going to go ahead and click accept and save it into Photoshop. Here we are back in Photoshop. And if you'll recall, I originally showed you briefly how to use a lookup table using uh, Photoshop and Luminar. And I did save the Luminar uh uh, look up table look and it looks like this. So that's one way of color grading your image. Okay, right there. Okay, and here's my Topaz Studio 2 with the quad tone filter. So two different approaches, uh, but both getting very good results in my opinion. So you can color grade all kind of different ways, but today it was all about using uh, basically Topaz Studio 2 and I showed you how to use the uh, dual tone filter as well as the quad tone filter and this is what the quad tone filter looks like here well there it is uh i showed you some different approaches to color grading today uh we started out i showed you uh photoshop using a lookup table in photoshop there's different ways of color grading in photoshop i mean many different ways uh using a lookup table is just one and as well as uh Luminar 4, I showed you how to use a lookup table there. And again, there's different ways of, use it, of, of doing color grading using uh, Luminar 4. But then I really uh, centered in on Topaz Studio 2 because I use Topaz Studio a lot in my workflow. And I really do love that quad tone uh, filter for color grading my images in Studio 2. But I showed you uh, dual tone as well as quad tone inside of Topaz Studio 2. And the inset image up here is the original and the larger image is the result with a quad tone filter. So color grading can give you some really nice cinematic effects and add a lot of drama and uh, artistic flair to your images. So give it a try. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. I really like to dialogue back with you. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. 